Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Playing World of Tanks, I'm AJ and today we'll be looking at a game that I had in my E100 which is the German tier 10 heavy tank. Now the move that I alluded to uh, a couple of weeks ago actually did happen last week and nearly killed me in the process but uh, it's complete and it took a little while before we got the internet at our new place so um, I couldn't upload anything until yesterday. So thank you to all the people who stuck around um, when I was kind of away. Also, thank you for all the uh, wishes, uh, well wishes w for the move, um, you know, I greatly appreciate it. Now if you're new to the channel, what we do is generally we take a game then which we did relatively well in and we uh, analyze what we did and what we could have done better. And um, this game in particular uh, was really good as far as um, you know damage and kills are concerned so I thought we would analyze it and break down what we did right or wrong. Now Fjords is a very interesting map I enjoy playing this map uh, if I'm in the medium or even if I'm in the TD just because your role can be a little bit ambiguous uh, you can go north and you get out there um, you know you can go middle and uh, do something about that Heavies, I don't really enjoy playing this map for a couple of reasons, uh, chief among which is that he, heavies are only like isolated to a very particular role and that is either go south or go north and um, you know just push around the corner and take a, lo a lot of damage for uh, essentially your team. Now generally but there's very few people uh, deploying north. Uh, in most games, but in this game, kind of the exception, there was a significant number of people deploying um, in the northern flank, so I thought if nothing else they would be able to defend themselves against whatever comes there, because um, defending size only has the upper hand and uh, in that case. So um, all I had to do was push south and sort of like claim victory over in that end and that would sort of like secure us the game, and so that was my plan looking at the deployment of our team. Now the other thing is once I arrive on this flank the one gripe I have with the E100 is it lacks pen with its uh, AP rounds so you have to fire uh, heat rounds on most tier 10 heavy tanks or well armored things the tier 10 uh, in order to have some kind of hope as to penning him. And now first round I put in the E5 I sort of snapshot um, it was half aimed into what I was trying to shoot, but the shell sort of like traveled upwards and bounced off his beak, which is probably the thickest part of the armor on the E5. Now at this point, uh, with, the, um, with so many tanks here, I kind of figured that I needed to take some kind of um, hits for a lot of the 8s that were sitting behind us and 9s, just because if you're in the tier 10 heavy tank, your job is to sort of like tank some shells for your team your job is not to be in base and snipe or you know be uh, behind a tiger too well he takes all the punishment for you just because if you let the tiger do die you know you're probably you know taking out another gun in the game that the enemy has to worry about so I take the lead and I um, sort of put um, as many um, rounds as I can into the enemies that are facing us so at kind of this point I could realize that there's a T62 behind us so I need to turn around and sort of deal with him before he actually has flanking shots on most of us. Now I had an AP round loaded for the Object 43 version 2 but the T62 really doesn't have much armor. Most actually tier 10 mediums don't have much armor and so you can easily pen them with AP rounds from the E100. And it's just a matter of aiming for his lower plate and I'm sorry not lower plate his, up, his upper plate or his hull and not hitting his turret and we take him out with relative ease. Now if you see me progressing slowly around the corner it was because uh, there was a JPZ that was also spotted in mid and I did not know where he was I just figured that the 62A was faster and therefore he got here quicker and the uh, JPZ was behind him somewhere and was just going to take a little bit longer to get here. Ideally I would have liked to take my time in going back and uh, but there was somebody who was capping and so at this point I kind of thought that since I'm pretty slow and takes about a minute uh, to get back to our cap um, I can't be as cautious as I wanted to be so what I'm gonna do is instead just rush back and see who it is. I'm taking the outside route back and that's purely because I didn't want uh, 
to worry about both of my sides when I'm driving back in the E100. Now I just have to worry about my left side. And as I slowly progress um, back, I'm just wondering which tank it is. And to my surprise, it's uh, the JPZ who had broken through the middle decided the best thing to do was just cap in that uh, situation. So that was kind of interesting, I have to say. Now the Yak Panther 2 is already there and so is the Scout to reset. The Scout makes uh, the terrible choice of facing the JPZ frontally and he gets taken out. The Yak Panther 2 does manage to reset him uh, in the nick of time and I am now on the other flank of the JPZ. And the JPZ, to my astonishment, instead of turning his tank towards me, opts for shooting at the Yak Panther 2 which gives me a pretty easy window into shooting him twice uh, without uh, taking any damage for it. Now I know that um, either I could be shot from the mid or shot from um, by the RD and so I use this rock to my left to cover my left side from uh, tanks that would be coming back uh, through the middle and lo and behold the RD actually does try to shoot me but uh, the rock actually manages to prevent that. Now at this point uh, I just wanted to cross uh, towards the other side and the primary reason for that is that the tall mountain that's in front of us would actually provide us ample RD cover and also um, that would narrow down the attackers coming in front of me. Now I'd retreat back uh, hoping to get a shot at the M41 who just shot me but he's smart enough to run away. As I'm crossing for the second time I just, the E50 comes out sideways to shoot at at me and um, he gets rebalanced for his efforts. Now once I've crossed uh, over to the other side I have a feeling that somebody would be trying to flank us. Um, somebody would be trying to come up behind us so what I'm gonna do is instead I'm gonna go straight north and clear it out and while I'm doing that the T-34 is spotted in the north as well. Now I need to go kill the T-34 so we only have one flank to worry about. I ping the map uh, hoping to tell the JP to to just watch south while I go north to sort of deal with the T-34 uh, at this point. Now as I'm heading north uh, the JP-2 managed to hit the T-34 and that is actually pretty ideal for me just because the T-34 was initially uh, two shot for me now he's reduced to one shot of damage. Also how the T-34 has positioned himself means I will have to give him some kind of a shot on me before I manage to pack one in return. But the thing that I'm not actually ready for is that T-34 managed to actually uh, put two shots into me instead of one and that is actually sloppy play on my part. The reason for that was I actually had turned my turret uh, towards him hoping to get a shot in his cheek um, and actually take him out but he manages to put one right back in my turret and like I said the T uh, E100 turret is relatively flat and only 250 armor so he's firing EPCR he'll just go straight through it. Now this next shot in fact is actually the more costly one uh, because it somehow manages to ammo rack me and then crack me at the same time which is not an ideal situation but I have a decent enough uh, repair speed on my crew to get out of this situation. I aim for the hull of the T-34 on the move and uh, he gets taken out with relatively easy. If I had not penned him I would just have rammed him at this point and would have killed him anyways uh, because of the ram if I had low rolled. Now as soon as the T-34 is taken care of uh, the M41 uh, is spotted in the middle as well and he's trying to proceed into the bushes that generally the TDs and the RD hide in. And um, I just back up to get a shot on him, but the shell velocity on this thing is so terrible that I have no hope in hitting him. It was more of like, you know, a Hail Mary than anything else in this situation. Now this makes it both of a simple and a slightly complicated affair. The M41 where he has gone makes it so that I know that I don't have to worry about my flank behind me. At the same time, those bushes give him enough camouflage where he can shoot from stealth without getting spotted. So that was the other problem I had with him being there. And the third problem is the Yak Panther 2 actually gets taken out uh, by the T-95 uh, who had slowly crept up uh, to our base. The only bright side to all of this is that all of them are low hills and they're all facing me frontally which makes the E-100 armor uh, very good. 
So I have loaded HG rounds from this point onwards because none of the tanks that have actually survived have enough HP to survive around an HG round from the E100. So I try to rush the T95 who's probably thinking that I'm still coming down and I catch him turning towards me and take him out with relative ease. Next is the T28 prod. Uh, if I had aimed slightly longer I might have taken a shot in return and actually taken some damage so I tried snapshotting him. First time it didn't work. Also I angle my turret towards the T28 and away from the bulldog who manages to land a heat round in my side and actually pen me which is uh, kind of annoying. So I angled my turret again uh, hoping uh, to not get pinned um, by the M41 because I need all the HP I can have at this point. This time I actually don't miss uh, and the prot gets taken out. Also rather surprisingly the M41 gets uh, lit up um, and he kind of asked me about this after the game is that he sat in the same spot shot me three times and didn't get lit, lit and for some unknown reason he gets uh, lit the last time. Unfortunately for him um, I just had reloaded and take him out uh, and that sleeps a one on one versus the arty who hits me for about 700 uh, frontally in the E100 so which is rather annoying and makes me rather one shot for him if he just splashes anywhere close to me. Now here's the interesting choice and the moral dilemma at this point. I could in theory go straight for the cap and cap but it would be really very close whether we would win or lose in that situation. But it is the safer play. At worst we would draw, at best we would win. So, But the greedy part of me kind of realizes that you know, I'm one kill away from getting a pulled medal and also the fact that if I do kill him it's a guaranteed win in any situation. So instead of giving up a draw and a victory I opt for trying to kill him and either have a defeat in the process if he like snapshots me or um, just you know plan out straight out kill him which gives me the pool medal and the victory for my team now know where he shot me from there's only one area he could be in the question is whether he moved whether he has moved or not and I was kind of afraid that he would think that I'm coming for him and he would have moved and to a better ambush spot and uh, he hasn't and it basically comes down to whose reflexes are faster and I managed to kill him and get a pools medal in my E100. Uh, one of three pools medals by the way that I have, the other one being on my 113. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this game. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next episode of Playing World Tanks.